Hey guys, and welcome back to a new weekly, monthly outlook, the bigger picture analysis that we do with our VIP members every week. This week, I decided to make it public for everyone. And yeah, we get started right away with the Forex Factory new schedule that we have. So once again, Monday, the 4th of December, we have no high impact news events. On Tuesday, we have PMI and job opening news. On Wednesday, we have the ADP non-farm employment change at 8.15. On Thursday, like every typical Thursday, unless there's a bank holiday, we have the unemployment claims at 8.30 a.m. And then on Friday, because it's the first week of December, we have the non-farm employment change, the NFP news event, the unemployment rate, and our average hourly earnings. And last but not least, on Friday at 10 a.m. after market open, we have consumer sentiment red folder high impact news. And that's about it for the new schedule. Now let's take a look at the seasonality of the S&P 500 e-mini during the month of December. And if we really zoom in here, even without zooming in here, we can already see that most of the time during December, let me zoom in here right like that, we don't do much. All we do is go sideways. If we look at the 15, 5 and 10 year average. And now to answer the question, if we should day trade during December. Yes, December can be a good month for trading. Even Google agrees, <laughs> though there's a noticeable decrease in market activity in the second half of the month. Any holiday period leads to a decrease in trading volumes. So we maybe don't day trade on Christmas Day or two days before Christmas Day. But every business is still operating until then. So let's jump right into trading view, looking at the ES1 S&P 500 futures e-mini contract. And as we can see right here, that's November, this, the largest bullish candle on the monthly time frame during the entire year of 2023. So now we're in the last month of the entire year. And we can already see that on the first trading day of December, we took out monthly buy side above the November high. And we actually also, let me zoom in here, we closed about above that. So this could be a good reference point for the entire month. We don't have any major monthly fair value gaps. I mean, we had this one right here. That's the only fair value gap on the monthly time frame that we have created this year. We closed below it. Now we're going above it. We are roughly from our closing price, 78 points away from the yearly high. I want to see that taken out and then we have more buy side liquidity above all these levels, all these monthly highs. And to answer that question, we could even take a look at the range for the monthly candle here on the monthly time frame again and look at the December 2022. We moved a total of 391 points on that monthly candle. And let's look at December during 2021. We moved a total of 315 points. So we can't really say that December usually is a bad month and we just go sideways and gonna see a doji. Here we moved 157. And during 2019, let's take a look at that December candle, 181 points. So I leave that questions up to you, to your own judgment, if you think that during the next four weekly candles that we are going to see if we are going to take out the high of the year and maybe even close above that. I'm not saying we're going to go above the all time high. That would be a little bit crazy, but I think we can see a new high for this year. Let's say roughly 150 points from here. This would be a good target area. So now let's take a look at the daily time frame. On the daily, we also close above the September high. We close above it, consolidated and expanded to the upside last Friday, the 1st of December. Now we're inside our highest daily bearish fair value gap. Let me actually see. Yeah, we've traded into it once and then we touched it and rejected. So yeah, I want to point out the consequent encouragement here coming in at 4618. And then that next area of interest for me would be the weekly, not the weekly, the daily volume imbalance right here from the 1st of August to the 2nd of August. So yeah, this is going to be 
those are going to be my two points of interest for on the daily time frame because we saw that on the weekly we already closed above our highest bearish value gap so that should theoretically be support now and yeah in terms of resistance if we want to make it into a new high for the year then those are our two main areas of resistance that we have to push through and where we could look for short-term rejections on the lower time frame for quick scalps so if you see a 2022 reversal setup where we form higher highs shift structure leave behind a inefficiency with a nice displacement looking for a quick five to ten point short at these areas would be something i'm looking forward to do next week let's also take a look at nasdaq on the daily time frame and compare it to the s p 500 so right here we have that high of the year coming in on nasdaq at 16,257.5 and on the s at 4,683.5 right here we had a daily smt divergence between nq and ds and yeah right now we're inside that highest daily bearish share value gap we're consolidating inside that candle bodies are respecting the extremes we didn't close above it yet we only wicked above it and we close above this volume imbalance right here that we referenced earlier on es from the 1st of august to the 2nd of august but on nq we're already above that and since closing above it we kept holding support so the bodies the daily candle bodies respected that unfilled volume imbalance right here on a daily time frame perfectly so really i'd be interested to see if yeah this keeps on holding support we got our first close above this daily bearish share value gap make it through this little volume imbalance also unfilled here from the 19th of july to the 20th of july and then eventually taking out the high of the year and now let's also take a look at the euro us dollar fx futures contract 6e1 we hit our previous week so from last week and um, the vip outlook we mentioned that this is going to be the weekly target this daily buy side liquidity and also weekly buy side liquidity from wednesday the 30th of august and then we also looked at the daily bearish value gap right here which is really the only daily bearish value gap we have all the way up till here we opened up this week right here on monday so i think it was pretty obvious that this could be a good draw on liquidity we eventually closed above that rejected saw a beautiful 2022 setup here and started to attack sell side liquidity looking forward what could we expect to happen on eu if we look at our q4 range from the low to the high maybe a retracement towards the 50 percent could be likely could also start to measure out our high of the year 2023 to the low of the year you can see that we moved above the 50 percent but i would really look forward to see what the dxy is up to because this could just be a sell side liquidity sweep to move price even higher so let's actually do that and take a look at the daily dxy time frame so on the dxy we mentioned that we during the live stream said we hit the 61.8 retracement level of this entire move to the upside from the low of the year back into the 50 percent of our all-time high to potential little retracement low so if we measure that out from the all-time high to the low we perfectly hit that 50 percent and then we started to retrace and once we saw that we looked for a potential retracement at least to the 50 percent of this entire range pd array the 50 percent no it's not showing it to me on the daily time frame let's open that folder up folder up and turn on the daily <clears throat> so to at least the 50 percent of this push to the upside 50 percent has been hit but we continued lower to fill that not lowest bullish share value gap but pretty much at least below the 50 percent if we go back to our ict fib retracement that's where we hit the golden pocket area we bounced off that fair value gap and also note how perfectly it has been respected we never closed below it yes we opened below it but this doesn't count as a close we kept on bouncing off that area again pushing through our first bearish share value gap and 
also closing above this bearish share value gap. We had a tiny little bearish share value gap here. So I'm really interested to see if this is going to hold support here, delivering into these daily buy side objectives, or if we're just gonna keep on collapsing on the DXY. Because we still have monthly sell side liquidity here, August lows, <clears throat> but it might be time for a little short term retracement because we just like said bounced off that 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level of this entire move to the upside. We started to invalidate or not respect our lowest, bear lowest two bearish share value gaps, which should really have been used as resistance because that's what we have been doing during this entire move to the downside. We had this volume imbalance down here, this gap on the daily time frame. We continued lower, leaving behind a bearish share value gap here. We didn't really perfectly respect it because we closed above. And then we failed, leaving behind a bearish share value gap. We respected it. And also take a look, we had this bullish share value gap, which has been used to hold support before. We closed below it and now we even respect the consequent encouragement. We do not close back above that. We tap into that fair value gap now here twice and we continue lower, closing below our next old bullish share value gap. What did we do afterwards? We close below, we retrace back into it and we keep on holding to the tick at the consequent encouragement and continue to go lower. We cut through, we cut through, we cut through, leaving behind two new bearish share value gaps but now all of a sudden we start, we're starting to not respect them anymore. The 1st of December also opened up with a big gap right here. So if we go to the weekly or maybe even to the monthly, we have a monthly volume imbalance. Looking at the bigger picture here, we've done that during the last live stream, so I'm not gonna go all over it again. I'll leave that up to you for yeah, your own judgment if you think that this is just a retracement on the DXY to continue higher. Or if we maybe see that July or August low continuation short for the month of December. We will see, only time will tell. And yeah, if you haven't seen my monthly, yearly and weekly analysis on the DXY, make sure to check out last week's weekly outlook. It's for all the VIP subscribers right on the Discord simply navigate into the VIP area and then head over to the weekly outlook. And right here, you're going to see the weekly outlook where I focus on EU DXY and mainly, yeah, even bigger timeframes like the yearly monthly, just to get a broad idea of where we could be going. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the weekly outlook this week. So I'm excited for next week. Make sure to join our live streams during the London session here for all the VIP members inside the live stream section and also for free on YouTube during the New York AM session. All right, guys, take care. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Let's get ready to rumble again next week. Take care. Bye.